Uh, hello again, uh, this is uh, Lama Kathy Wesley on behalf of Columbus Karma Takes Some Choling Tibetan Buddhist Meditation Center in Columbus, Ohio, uh, welcoming uh, all of you uh, to the Amitabha, uh, the, the Amitabha practice explanation. This is, um, the, um, this is the second time we have offered this workshop as part of our Sadhana Saturday series, where we're trying to offer Sadhana instruction and the Sadhanas and practices we do at Columbus KTC, we're trying to offer them on a more frequent basis so that more people can connect to the practice, understand it and be able to apply it in their everyday life. So I wanna thank all of you for signing up to be here. Additionally, I want to thank you uh, for donating to Columbus KTC by uh, your donations. This helps our operating fund, which helps us to fund our new building. So thank you again for that. Beginning with, uh, the, um, with a sense of refuge, taking refuge in the Buddha as our teacher, the Dharma as our path, the Sangha as our community, we dedicate this class to the benefit of all suffering beings. I'll recite a short prayer. Ore Sanje Chudang Soji Chanam La Jang Chu Bardu Dani Chapsu Che Daji Chen Soji Pe Sunam Ki Drola Pinchir Sanje Dru Parsho. Now a prayer to the Gurus of the Lineage. Palin Sawilama Rimboche Tagi Chi War Pe De Ten Shala Kadran Jembo Gone Che Sunte. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, for those of you who just joined, uh, right now we're taking a moment to reflect on questions we might have about the sadhana before we start. Because uh, if I have an idea of what information you're seeking, I'll be able to tailor what I present to what your needs are. So the first question was about... Um, uh, this uh, particular practice of, of Amitabha, and if today's class will cover the visualizations from that, and the answer is yes, we will, we will cover them in depth, uh, particularly the visualizations that happen during the mantra recitation, uh, because those are a little complex. Uh, we did describe and discuss them uh, the last time we had this uh, workshop, but uh, I want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and that they understand them, so we'll go through them. Also, just a timing reminder, uh, our class will last uh, until 12 noon, uh, we will um, do we will uh, do away with the usual uh, break that we use in a two hour session. Now, the second question that someone is asking is the uh, Amitabha practice uh, that we use in Chenrezig at Columbus KTC, is it the same Buddha Amitabha practice as is used elsewhere? And uh, the answer to that is yes and no because um, there are four traditions of Tibetan Buddhism and each one received specific and separate transmissions of all of these practices. And therefore the Buddha, Buddha Amitabha practice that we do may or may not be the same Buddha Amitabha practice that is doing, done in the Nyingma, the, uh, the Nyingma, the Sakya and the Geluk traditions of Buddhism. And even among the Kaju traditions, there are numerous Amitabha practices. Some of them are short, some of them are long. The, the ones that we are familiar with at uh, KTC um, and at KTD Monastery come from uh, something called the Namchu tradition. I'm going to open um, I'm going to open a Word document here. Uh, I've, I've heard that Zoom is, um, is trying to improve their whiteboard, which I'm incredibly grateful for, because the original form of whiteboard was a little tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, a, a share screen. Uh, there it is. Okay, and I'm going to type a couple of things in there for you. You will all be emailed a copy of these notes uh, when we are done. I think I need bigger typeface. What do you think? We need we need it to be bigger. Now let's just go for broke here, guys. Okay. All right, notes. And I think we're going to pick uh, a uh, yeah notes. Okay. So this is. Um, all right. So the the first thing is that uh, this uh, sadhana. Uh, of the uh, Karmakaju tradition. It comes from what's called the uh, Namchu. Is 
the NumChu um, transmission. And this dates back to the um, 16th century. And the, um, and the toku, Namchu, Minjo Dorje. Uh, and then uh, the, the editing and the transcribing uh, was by uh, Karma Chakme uh, Rinpoche. So that's a little bit about where, what we're going to be talking about today. The actual text that we're going to be working with is the short version of the Namchu. Uh, as, um, as we noted before the recording started, there is a, uh, and many people will have seen the long sadhana of Amitabha uh, teaching given by Kempo Kartha Rinpoche a number of years ago at KTD Monastery. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, it is also about a Namchu text. So the visualizations for the Namchu texts are the same. So there are two Namchu texts, uh, Namchu tradition texts of Amitabha. They both come from Namchu Minjo Dorje, who lived in the 16th century, and were, both of them were edited by Karma Chakme Rinpoche. But there are two of them, a short one and a long one. And interestingly enough, the visualizations for both the short and the long are the same. So we are lucky in that way. However, however, where they are recite, where, where they are done in the sadhana is different. So <laughs> where they are done is different. So we have, to, uh, we have to accommodate the fact that the short practice is a little bit collapsed. And so, so the visualizations will be collapsed also. So uh, Matthew, did that answer your question about, uh, about, the, uh, about if these, oh, I'm sorry, this was yeah. Justin's question. In fact, I see your hand raised, sir. Um, I think I, I think the real question I'm asking is um do you have a do you have an electronic copy of a text we can follow yeah let's do that uh, you know that might actually be a, a really easy thing to do let me uh turn off this screen share for a moment and uh and get the actual text in front i think that's an excellent idea and let's do that that's what i meant i was gonna like try to i'm like all disorganized this morning, but I was going to try to find my Chinrezig text and then go to the uh, Amitabha part. That's what I was uh, trying and to you know, I, I hear you. And I think that's an excellent idea. So I'm going to uh, put that together for you right now, because I think this will help everyone, because that way, no matter which text of, uh, of Amitabha that you have, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to work together on that. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what. You're not the only person who is feeling slightly behind the curve today. <laughs> so uh, I'm super happy. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I, well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do as uh, as much as we can here. All right. So uh, okay, I'm gonna stop the the screen share on the on the notes and then take us over to the um, to the text. Any other questions? Uh, I'll do that in a minute. Uh, any other questions that people might have that they want to make sure we get covered today? Um, I see Matthew is asking if we can learn the long Amitabha practice. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Um, I yeah, I was I was present, so I have the transmission on that, and we'll have to set up a separate event for that. That's um, that's a very lengthy uh, lengthy process because we have to learn um, if we really want to do it right. We have to learn both the the chanting and the visualization and all of the ritual that goes with it because it's uh, it uh, if you do the whole practice in its entirety, it could take uh, for fast chanters, it could be done in maybe three hours, um, um, but mm, uh, it, uh, it, it, what they usually did at KTD was they split it into two. They did part of the sadhana in the morning and part of the sadhana in the afternoon. So it's like a four hour practice if you really want to do it up in what I call high church. You know, so if you want to do it up high church, uh, we have to we have to kind of go for broke. But I do think that's a great idea. And uh, we'll I will do an instruction on that coming up. Probably we'll probably uh, get to it in the summer if we get to it. And if not, we'll get to it in the fall. Depends on what's happening at Columbus KTC. We might have some things happening. 
Any anything else that people would want to make sure they know today? Uh, hey, you're welcome, Matthew. Any anything else that you want to make sure you hear today? Okay. Well then, all right. Let's um let's talk a moment about the practice of Amitabha. The Buddha Amitabha uh, is one of the uh, five Buddhas of the five Buddha families. And um, those of you who have heard the, the, the idea of the five Buddha families, if you've heard that idea before, you'll know that uh, the five Buddha families are um, meditational practices that are done in order to counteract five different types of mental affliction and to un, uh, reveal five types of wisdom. The, the Buddha in his teachings said that we all have uh, Buddha nature, meaning that we have a mind that has the capacity to awaken to its own nature and to be, we all have the capacity to become Buddha ourselves. I think that to me, I, I know that uh, Christians used to talk about the good news of salvation uh, that's in the gospels, but I feel like the good news of Buddhism is that we all have the capacity to be Buddha and that uh, we all uh, have the potential to bring that out. And there are many ways in which our enlightened potential or Buddha nature can be brought, brought out. And one of the methods for bringing out our enlightened potential is through the practice of mantra and visualization. So um, I'm gonna hop back on my, my, my artificial whiteboard here for a second. Uh, let's see, where is my artificial whiteboard? Uh, da, 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 da. Well, that's interesting. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So let me move this around a bit. Okay, here we go. So um, the the practice of um, of uh, mantra and visualization uh, comes from the idea uh, we all have Buddha nature. And there are many ways to bring it out. Uh, one of the ways uh, is uh, to bring out Buddha nature is, uh, to, is the practice of mantra and visualization. And, and so when we talk about the uh, five Buddha families as uh, we started out here, it's a, a teaching that describes uh, the qualities of Buddhahood that lie within all of us. And that the different practices evoke. Okay, so for example, I'm going to see if I can do this off the top. Uh, the um, the Buddha Amitabha is uh, it, each one of these uh, Buddhas symbolize the overcoming of one particular type of mental affliction. And Amitabha overcomes uh, obsessive attachment, and uh, and the and then he uh, then through this uh, it, through doing his practice, we uncover the, um, uh, there, okay, okay, there's one of the five wisdoms. And, and I'll, I'll have to look these up, uh, to be honest with you, because um, I was unable to get my notes together this morning because I was so busy working on the Zoom, uh, the, our Zoom crisis when we couldn't get online this morning. But so I'm just going to give you the names and we'll uh, fill in the, the details uh, afterward and then I'll send all of this to you. There's, um, uh, there's also the Buddha Akshobhya and, uh, and this is the overcoming of anger. And, uh, and then there is the, the, the Buddha Ratna Sambhava. Uh, the overcoming of pride. And uh, let's see, okay, Baracha. 
And this is the overcoming of jealousy. And uh, then uh, the, there are different ways of talking about uh, the, um, the central Buddha in the, um, in the group. Let's, let me get this in front of me here. I have some notes online. Here we go. All right. Uh, so in any case, um, I have this, I thought I had this, uh, I thought I had, I thought I was missing one. I've had this wrong. Oh, Amoga City overcomes jealousy. Varachana is the, um, yeah, I've got it now. All right. Oh yeah, okay. Overcomes ignorance. So I think we got it. There are several systems for talking about the um, the five uh, Buddha families, and um, and so that is uh, one system. So each of these Buddhas overcomes one kind of negative mental affliction, and then uncovers one kind of inherent wisdom. And so that's, and so the Buddha Amitabha is the overcoming of attachment. And so I'll fill in these uh, wisdoms for you later on before I, I email that to you later today. Okay. All right. So um, in any case, um, yeah, okay, got it. Okay, got it. So that's a little bit about um, the uh, Ami, where Amitabha comes from. He's, um, he's spoken of in the sutras and his qualities are described. And this particular sadhana that we're studying today was a, uh, what's called a treasure text or a terma, T-E-R-M-A. And uh, I'll put this in the notes as well. And so it is called a treasure text because it was a thought that when uh, Guru Rinpoche uh, left Tibet, uh, that, he, um, that he left behind a lot of teachings. He left some of them buried in the ground. He left some of them uh, buried underwater. And he actually placed some in uh, what they call the expanse of space. And these um, space dharmas, uh, or nam chu, nam means space, chu means dharma. Uh, and this uh, particular treasure revealer, nam chu minjur dorje, had a vision. And in his vision, he saw the Buddha Amitabha and interacted with the Buddha Amitabha. And then after the vision ended, he wrote down his supplication to Amitabha based on his vision. And so having met the Buddha Amitabha personally, uh, the young uh, Namchu Minjadorje uh, was able to transmit through this sadhana practice of the, the Amitabha, the blessing of the Buddha Amitabha to us who read that, who study that, who practice that. And so again, to help us to, uh, it's not that uh, Kemper Karth Rinpoche once said sometime, one time, he said, uh, we're limited human beings. And so we think, well, we have all five of these negative mental afflictions. We have ignorance, we have jealousy, we have pride, we have uh, miserliness, we have uh, all of these different mental afflictions. Do we need to practice all five Buddhas of all five Buddha families? in order to overcome these. And Rinpoche, he said, he said, we are limited human beings and we think we need one Buddha for every, uh, one Buddha for each thing. He said, however, he says it's said over and over again in Buddhist texts that if you practice one of these really, really well, you will actually accomplish all five of them. <laughs> so I just want to be here today to tell you that 
uh, that don't be concerned because there are five Buddhas that you might have to practice five different things in order to overcome your five different mental afflictions and, and grow your five inner wisdoms. <laughs> You're fine. You can pick just one. And when they call them families, the reason they're called families is because there are, are many related practices with each of the five families. Uh, each of the family uh, has a, has a um, an emblem, and this emblem uh, is also another way of talking about the name of their family. So. Um, uh, let's see, I'm going to um, open up our chat here again, or um, our whiteboard, and show you on the whiteboard. There we go. Um, which each of these are. The Buddha Amitabha is called Padma, or Lotus Family. The Akshobi is called the, um, the Vajra Family. Uh, yes, or uh, sometimes the word diamond is used. The um, Ratna Sambhava is from the Ratna or jewel family. Arachana is called the uh, Buddha family. And Amoga City, all the Karma family. Uh, we all know what Buddha means. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, each one of these has a um, has um, a way of talking about it. So these. These five Buddha families then have names and uh, we can talk about them separately in a special class. You know, the, the Lotus family, the I mean, the Padma family, the Vajra family, the Ratna, the Buddha and the Karma. We can talk about all these in a separate class on the five Buddha families. And I think you'll enjoy hearing about that. But, um, uh, the, uh, but this particular text uh, by Namchu Minjur Dorje uh, addresses the Buddha Amitabha and so uh, we'll spend a little bit more time talking about that now. Does anybody have questions about what we've discussed so far? Uh, I want to make sure that you're okay with, uh, with the description of the five Buddha families and how. Yes, uh, Doug, go ahead. And where does Chen Rezik fit in? Uh, under ah, the, the family, uh, right? Baba family? He is, uh, he is part of the uh, Amitabha fam Amitabha's family, the Padma family. And unfortunately, my... Uh, my knowledge isn't broad enough to know which, like, which family some of these uh, deities belong to. So rather than make a mistake, I won't say. But I do, I because I, you know, I don't know off the top of my head. But Chen Rezi is part of the Padma family, which is why the uh, Amitabha practice is often associated with the with the the Chen Rezi practice. Why the two of them are put together because Chen Rezi has Amitabha as his, uh, you remember from the Chen Rezi text, it says as your the ornament above your crown, the crown of your head, uh, Chen Rezi, you have Buddha who, um, the Amitabha Buddha, who is the, um, who is the head of your family. And so he's visualized, Chen Rezi is visualized as being uh, a deity made of white light. And above his head is visualized the Buddha Amitabha made of red light. So we have in this way, both, uh, both of them represented. So did that answer your question, Doug? Doug, uh, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Okay, very also, good. I'm okay. thinking Chen Rezi sits on a lotus. Well, you, you know, interestingly enough, uh, when we see the depictions of many, many of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they are all sitting on a lotus. Tara is sitting on a lotus, Manjushri sitting on a lotus, and so on. Uh, because the lotus symbolizes um, loving kindness, and the, uh, and the moon disc that's usually sitting on top of it symbolizes uh, compassion. So loving kindness is the lotus, and the moon disc is compassion. And this is according to Kemper Bache's teaching on uh, the on Chen Rezi, which is a whole separate class <laughs> in itself. Uh, but uh, but 
uh, how these Buddhas came to be associated with one another is spoken of in the sutras. So for example, when you read the sutras, it explains that Chen Rezi took his Bodhisattva vow from Amitabha and then he became discouraged and broken a thousand pieces and the Buddha Amitabha, who was his guru, put him back together with a thousand arms. So these types of stories are in the sutras to explain the relationship between the bodhisattvas and the Buddha of their, that's the head of their family. So does that help out? Okay. Yeah, very much, thank you. Hey, okay, very good. I'm, I'm hey, we're having a good discussion here. Um, uh, can we talk briefly about who was Amitabha Buddha? You know, I, I have to tell you, um, I have, uh, it's, I, I was trying to grab my, my notes this morning to bring them so that I could do some uh, last minute study. And you know what? Uh, I did not. I did not have time because we had a we had a Zoom crisis this morning, <laughs> so I didn't have time to bring those to mind. However, the story that is told about the Buddha Amitabha, which was when uh, he was a, a bodhisattva on the, uh, he had not yet attained Buddhahood. He took his bodhisattva vows, and as part of his bodhisattva vows. He actually made a very unusual aspiration. And, um, and this unusual aspiration was that when he attained Buddhahood, he aspired to create and manifest a pure realm that any being could enter, even if they were not enlightened. They could actually experience his pure realm. That was his wish. Those of you who are familiar with the medicine Buddha practice know that when the medicine Buddha was an aspiring bodhisattva, he aspired to be able to heal people who just hear his name, right? So just by hearing my name, may people be healed. So when he became a Buddha, that capacity came that wish came true essentially and so people now call upon medicine buddha for healing just so because the buddha amitabha made the aspiration that when he became a buddha he would manifest a pure realm that all beings could enter all i mean all um human beings could enter then it actually became so and you might say well that's a little silly <laughs> How is that possible? And the whole concept of a pure realm uh, seems a little strange to some folks in the West because it reminds them of the Christian and Jewish ideas of heaven and so on and so forth. And here's, here's my take on it. A Buddha realm is actually, and this is according to the teachings that Kempo Karthar and Bache gave us in Three Year Retreat, a Buddha realm is essentially the purification of our reality and our environment. For example, each of us has um, what we would, call, each of us is the center of our own samsaric mandala. The word mandala means center and surrounding. Okay, so we are in the center. The, the Buddha of a practice is in the center of their mandala and all their little bodhisattva attendants and so on are around them in these mandalas you see depicted, whether it's drawn or done in sand. A mandala literally means a pure realm or it is the realm of that particular Buddha or bodhisattva. It's their environment. And so the center of that mandala is the Buddha. That of that mandala that manifests that environment. Mm -hmm. So the surrounding is everything that is in that, in that environment. Kemper Rinpoche told us he, when we were in retreat, he said, you, each one of you is a mandala. Each one of you right now has a samsaric mandala of your family, your friends, your coworkers, the home you live in you know, the, uh, the people you associate with, your community, that is your samsaric mandala. When you become an enlightened Buddha, you will experience that samsaric mandala as an awakened mandala, and it will be different for you. So this is why we do the practices of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to purify our obstacles and obscurations 
so that we can see the pure realm that is already around us in our current situation. So it's not that we're putting together some kind of like magic mumbo jumbo to like create like Disneyland in our minds, you know, something that's unreal. It's actually a way of re explaining and re-experiencing our current environment in an awakened way. And so um, one person uh, said to me of Kempo Karthar Rinpoche that he felt that Rinpoche was an enlightened being and that this is why he was so kind to everyone because he saw all of them as Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. He saw all of them as what they could become and he related to them in that way. And so by relating to them in that way, he helped them to develop their own Buddha nature so that they could, they could become like him. So um, sorry, that was a long way around uh, talking about uh, who the Buddha Amitabha was, but because of the Buddha Amitabha's promise that his pure realm could be entered by anyone, who made the aspiration to be reborn with him. This is why he is especially practiced by people who are near death or who wish to be reborn in that pure realm. Um, recently, uh, Mingyur Rinpoche uh, gave um, a really remarkable teaching uh, on the Buddha Amitabha. And if you can find it online, it's worth watching. He spoke specifically about the pure realm of the Buddha Amitabha, which is called um, Dewa Chen. I'm going to type that into the notes for you. It's D-E-W-A-C-H-E-N, the pure realm of Dewa Chen or the blissful. Uh, let's see. Oops. Again, I'm going to type that in to the uh, to the um, our little whiteboard. I'm not going to show you that right now, but I'm going to make sure that that point is made for you so that we can fill that in. And Dewa means happiness and Chen means great. So if you put Dewa, which is happiness and Chen, which is great together, you get Dewa Chen, the, uh, the Buddha field of Amitabha. When Mingyu Rinpoche gave his teaching on uh, Dewa Chen and the Buddha Amitabha, he, um, you know, in his own inimitable style, uh, he talked about the uh, four factors uh, that uh, bring about rebirth in Dewa Chen. And, uh, and he called it the address of the Buddha Amitabha. He said, stand by, I'm going to give you the address for Dewa Chen so that you can go there. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you what those four are, and then we're going to describe the sadhana as a way of carrying out those four things. Uh, here we go. Share screen document. Here it comes. So I love it that, uh, that Mingyu Rinpoche has such a way with words, and his command of English is so good that he can use words that help us understand concepts. So he said, here's the address for the Buddha Amitabha. Uh, the first one is a refuge. The second is a bodhicitta. The third is the accumulation of virtue. And the fourth is the dedication of virtue. So each one of these is in the Buddha Amitabha practice we're going to do today. Now, there are other ways that talk about the four factors that cause rebirth in Dewa Chen. This is just one uh, description of the four factors. And I will uh, fill in for you the other, four, the, the other version of the four factors. There's, there's a couple different versions of the four factors, uh, but this was the uh, set of four factors that um, Ming Jirimpache uh, uh, said caused the rebirth in Dewa Chen. Uh, any questions about this part? So far, so good, right? So, um, Helder, does that give you the information you wanted about uh, the history of the Buddha Amitabha? Yeah. 
I'm going to take that as a yes. All right. So um, the um, so I think now what we'll do is we'll look at the uh, sadhana itself and get that on screen in front of us. And, uh, and then we'll start talking about that. Uh, let's go all the way to the beginning of this. Okay. Okay. Do a little screen share here. Uh, many of you will be familiar with the Amitabha Sadhana because we recite it regularly at uh, both KTCs and at the KTD Monastery. Uh, can folks see this all right? Okay. Yes. So is uh, yes, good. All right, thanks. Uh, the Buddha Amitabha is depicted as being red in color because he is associated with the Western direction. Each of the five Buddhas is associated with one of the directions. Uh, Moga City is north, uh, um, uh, Akshobhya is east, Ratnasambhava is so uh, south, and Amitabha is west. So uh, this gives you an idea of uh, why they have the colors they have. Um, and so the Buddha Amitabha is red, which is the color of the setting sun, the sky around the setting sun. He's, um, his hands are an equipoise in his lap, holding a begging bowl uh, filled with nectar. He's wearing uh, the robes of a renunciate or a uh, bhikshu or a monk. Uh, so the, uh, remember the address uh, of the... Uh, <laughs> of Amitabha Buddha, given by uh, Major Rinpoche. It starts with a refuge in Bodhicitta and then goes on to the accumulation of virtue and then concludes with the uh, dedication. So uh, uh, according to the uh, teachings of Kempa Karta Rinpoche, um, I'm going to, let's see, bring this up. Oops. For the uh, refuge and bodhicitta section, we uh, we imagine that the uh, Buddha is in front of us. Uh, the Buddha Amitabha is in front of us, and uh, while imagining that he is in front of us, we recite uh, a, a prayer of taking refuge and engendering the bodhisattva uh, motivation. I had a hiccup with the screen share. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, it's the, the, the Zoom gods this morning are not smiling upon us. The words in English are here. They say uh, nama, which means praise or homage. Kunchuk sumdang sawasum, chabni namla chapsuchi, drokun sanje laguchir, janchu chotu senkedo. So the, um, the three jewels and the three roots of refuge, three jewels are the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. The three roots are the lamas, the yidams, and the protectors. The three jewels are the, the, the jewels of refuge for the um, Mahayana path. The Buddha is the teacher, Dharma is the path, Sangha is the community. And the three roots are the roots of the uh, of refuge in the Tantra or Vajrayana, the Lamas that are the root of blessing, the Yidam deities, uh, which are the root of accomplishment, and uh, then finally the Dharma protectors, who are the root of Dharma activity. So those are the three jewels and three roots. I go for refuge. To establish all beings in Buddhahood, I generate the supreme enlightened mind. And so the... Um, um, this actually has both parts of the, uh, of the quote unquote address of the Buddha Amitabha. Refuge is the first two lines. Kunchuk Sundam Sawasum, Chap Nenam La Chap Suchi. Chap means refuge. Uh, and so then the next two lines, Drokun Sanjay Lagu Chir, Janchu Chotu Senke Do. Uh, these are um, the engendering of the Bodhisattva motivation so that we are doing 
we establish that we're doing this practice of the Buddha Amitabha not for ourselves alone, but for all sentient beings. And then after that, it's followed by the second part of the Buddha Amitabha's address, which is the accumulation of virtue. And so in order to accumulate virtue, we, um, we make offerings and we recite mantras. All of these are uh, a way of accumulating merit toward being reborn in Dewa Chen. And so uh, how, do we, how do we perform this accumulation of merit? We, we, uh, we perform this accumulation of merit by imagining that we are Chen Rezi. So that's how the, the practice begins. On a, on a uh, lotus flower, the waterborn, which is a poetic way of talking about lotuses that grow on ponds, bodies of water, I appear, so that's me, you, of the practice. I appear as the white bodhisattva, Chenrezig. And uh, normally this would be the forearm Chenrezig. So you imagine your body is no longer being made of just ordinary flesh and blood, that you're made of light. And, uh, and that you uh, have all of the att attributes of the Buddha, I mean, the uh, Bodhisattva Chenrezig. The two hands joined together at the heart in prayer, holding a wish-fulfilling jewel. The outer right hand holding a rosary. The outer left hand holding a lotus flower. And uh, the, uh, the, over the, the left side of the breast, one is uh, wearing the, uh, the uh, Krishnasara deerskin to symbolize the total giving compassion of Chenrezi, who is willing to lay down his life to benefit beings, just as the legendary Krishna Sara deer lays down its life to benefit others. So having all of the five jeweled crown, the silks and jewels that Chenrezi is usually uh, depicted wearing, we imagine that in front of us in the sky is the Buddha Amitabha. He's, uh, he is visualized as facing us and slightly above us in space. So we're going to actually visualize not just the Buddha Amitabha, but the entire pure realm of Dewa Chen as being in front of us. And we are going to be like the Bodhisattva Chen Rezi, a subject of the Buddha Amitabha here in Dewa Chen. So here's already the transformation of our ordinary Samsaric mandala, we're already transforming it into the mandala of Dewa Chen by imagining that in that instant of thought, our confused projections of this world disappear and that we are suddenly in Dewa Chen. We are Chen Rezi and uh, the Buddha Amitabha is in front of us and facing us. And so, uh, on a lotus and moon disc in front of us is the protector Amitabha, red in color. So the, the words here, uh, let's see. Meito chuke pe me ten, de nan rani senpakar, dundu pe ma da den la upa megun kudok mar. Ku is body, mar is red. And so the idea is uh, dun is like in front. Then, we, then he's going to describe the Buddha Amitabha. He has one face, two hands resting in the mudra of equanimity in his lap, holding a begging bowl. Shalshik, Shani, Nyam Shakteng, Lunze Zinjing, Chuguso, Kilmog, Trungi, Shukbala, Yesu Jikten, Wan Shukkar. Shalshik, Chakji, Taljardang, Yeyun, Pema, Train Wan Zin, Shempe, Taki, Pedar, Shuk. So this is uh, describing uh, who is attending the Buddha Amitabha in Dewa Chen. His attendants are uh, on the right of the Buddha Amitabha, which is our left facing them, is the powerful Lord of the universe, Chen Rezig, white in color, one face, four arms. He's standing actually, the palms of the first two joined together in his heart, the second right towards the circle of mala beads and the left, a lotus flower. He stands on a lotus and moon disc. So the Buddha Amitabha is seated and Chen Rezi is standing on Amitabha's right, excuse me, which is our left. And then on Amitabha's left, our right, is the, is the Bodhisattva Vajrapani, known as the Great Powerful One. He, um, in the, it says, Yundu Chakdor Tuchen Top, 
Shalchik Chani Kudongo, Yeyendroje Dribudzin, Jembe Taki Pedarshuk. So uh, Vajrapani is uh, the, the, the uh, protector of the Vajrayana. He has, he, but he's seen here as a peaceful bodhisattva, not as a wrathful bodhisattva. He's seen as a peaceful bodhisattva. One face, two arms, blue in color. Right hand holds a Vajra or Dorje, and the left a bell. The Dorje symbolizes skillful means, and the bell uh, represents wisdom. He stands on a lotus and moon disc. So now we have described the, the three central figures of the pure realm of Dewa Chen. Now we're going to describe everyone else. Sanjay Jangchub Senpada, Nyentu Drachom Pamekor, Sowo Sungi. Uh, I'm sorry, Sanjay Janchup Sempadang Nyentu Drachom Pame Kor. Kor means like surrounding. So Sanjay, uh, all of the numberless Buddhist bodhisattvas, shravakas, and arhats surround them. So the idea is that the Buddha Amitabha is surrounded by all, all manner of enlightened beings, not one left out. So now we've imagined that we are in Dewa Chen. And the Buddha in front of us is uh, the Buddha Amitabha with his two attendant bodhisattvas. But we might have a doubt in our mind that this really is the Buddha Amitabha. So sadhana practices like these include an extra step. And we're going to do that extra step now, which is all of the Buddhas and bodhisattvas that we visualized as being in front of us. We imagine that from the forehead, the throat, and the heart, of these imagined visualized Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, all of them, not just the three principles of Dewa Chen, but all of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and visualized in front of us, in order to overcome our doubt that we are in the presence of these actual Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, we're going to imagine that lights come out from their foreheads, their throats, and their hearts. And that these lights go to the real pure realms and invite the genuine, actual Buddhas and Bodhisattvas from those pure realms. And then we imagine that these uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas come to actually be around us. They sort of are 360 around us, hovering over all of, uh, all of this scene that we have created. And so it says here, so wo sum gi ne sum gi, drusum leni utrupe dewa chen ne chendrang jur. Chendrang is like um, uh, invite. So in the, the, these three places, the lights that come from these pl three places uh, come from these three places because they're associated with the body, the speech, and the mind, which are what makes up a being, their body, their speech, and their mind. The forehead is symbolic of the body. The throat is symbolic of the speech, and the the uh, the heart is symbolic of the mind. So, from the forehead, throat, and heart, the body, speech, and mind of the individual, we invite the body, speech, and mind of the enlightened ones, and we imagine that they that they come from Dewa Chen. These mantras that follow enact, they're like a little play, if you want to put it this way, a little theatrical presentation. And this, in this theatrical presentation, we're inviting these beings to come and we use the mudras, which we unfortunately may not have time to cover today. But we use the mudras and these words to do the invitation and make the visualization more real for us. We begin with the words, Omami Dewa Shri, uh, uh, this is uh, Amidewa, Om Amidewa Shri is a way of saying Amitabha's name. And it is the mantra, the short mantra of the Buddha Amitabha. So we start by asking him principally to come. Then it says, Benza Samayadza, which means through your promise. Samaya means promise. Through your promise, your Vajra promise, Benza, come here. And so, uh, and so that's the first part of this little play that we're enacting. We imagine the lights go out on Omami Dewa Shri and that they connect with the beings and that the, the, the beings actually assemble around us. And so the, the gestures for that, for Omami Dewa Shri, there's no specific gesture, 
Om Ami Dewa Shri is the mantra, but then we roll our hands to the side and cross our hands with the left hand toward the heart, the right hand on the outside, and we snap our fingers. Benza Samayadza. Okay, so, so we tip the hands from left to right, come toward us and cross our hands and snap. Benza Samayadza is the assembly mudra. Oh my gosh, it's like Avengers Assemble, only it's for Buddhas. Benza Samayadza. And then we ask for the Buddhas to dissolve into the, the real Buddhas to dissolve into the visualized ones. And they, we imagine that they do this at uh, Zahum Bam Ho. Uh, Zahum Bam Ho, are, these are syllables that symbolize the, uh, the merging of the deities from top to bottom and side to side. Zahum Bam Ho, Zahum Bam Ho, top to bottom, side to side. And uh, there's a mudra that goes with this that's hard to show because uh, I'm, I'm not sitting above the camera here. Uh, it, I mean, my hands are not above the camera, but you place your, uh, your left hand out, palm upward, and uh, you curl the two middle fingers of your hand to being with the thumb of your hand. And you do that on the right hand as well. And then you touch the insides of your wrists. You know, I'm gonna do it like this, but it's actually held flat. And the, the left hand does nothing. It just sits there. So, the inside of the wrist is touched to the inside of the wrist for za. Then the back of the right wrist touches the inside of the left wrist for hong. And then the left hand is still just sitting there doing nothing. Then the right index finger touches the left pinky for bam. And then finally the left hand moves and they change places. The left hand goes to the top and the right hand goes to the bottom. And the index finger of the left hand touches the pinky of the right hand. And so this slow motion, uh, will you can watch this part of the video several times over and it will help you learn that mudra. The second half of this mudra, after we have, uh, after we have dissolved them together from top to bottom and side to side, is then we sweep our hands upward in this way, saying Tiktra Len, meaning please be seated on these lotus thrones that we have given you. But it, what we're really saying is please dissolve into these visualized deities. And then, and then we place our hands together in prayer at Ati Puho. Now you can play this section over and over again, and this will help you to learn these mudras. I'm going to go through them one time now completely so that you can see the sequence. Uh, your hands are not in prayer at the beginning. Om Ami Dewa Shri, then you sweep your hands, Benza Samaya Za, and then Za Hom Bam Ho, Tiktra Len Ati Pu Ho. Now, the, because we still might have some doubts, <laughs> we still might have some doubts as to whether these deities are real. We imagine that we as Chenrezig um, are then ritually purified and blessed by representatives of the five Buddha families. And so each one of these syllables, Om Hong Tram Ri Ah, symbolize one of the five Buddhas. Uh, because I don't have time, I can't get into who's who, but uh, the idea is that what happens in this section of the little play, <laughs> of our little play, our little production, is the, the five male Buddhas are sitting in meditation while the five female Buddhas take up pitchers of nectar and pour these pitchers of nectar into the tops of our heads as Chenrezig, filling us from the bottom to the top with nectar and purifying all of our stains and faults. And so through this little play, this little part of the little play, the Buddhas meditate and the, the male Buddhas meditate, the female Buddhas then place the nectar through the top of our heads, filling us up. And then the word abhikinsa mam. These words abhikinsa mam are that um, abhikinsa means uh, empowerment. So may you empower us. And once you remember the female Buddha's pouring the nectar into our heads until we fill up to the top. 
Well, once we fill up to the top, a little comes out the top and the, um, the Buddha Amitabha appears at the top of our head to symbolize the accomplishing of being purified by the five Buddhas. So he appears up at the top. So um, this is the, the second way that we accumulate virtue. We start by visualizing ourselves as Chenrezig and visualizing Amitabha in front of us. Then we, in, through this little play, Om Amidewa Hri Benza Samayadza, Zahum Bam Ho Tetralen Atipuho, Ohon Tramri A Abhikin Samam, we invite the real Buddhas to be with us, to uh, merge with the visualized Buddhas that we have, and then to fill us up with the nectar of purification. Now, uh, those of you who learn the uh, Medicine Buddha uh, practice will know that there are, are gestures that are done with the Om Hong Tram Hri A to symbolize our being crowned by the five Buddhas. Uh, Kempa Rinpoche, uh, I think uh, out of pity for us, did not teach us those five mudras at the time he taught us the Buddha Amitabha practice. Therefore, I still don't do them. And they aren't generally done uh, at KTD Monastery. But I know there are many folks who have learned these mudras, but we will not be teaching those today since Rinpoche did not teach us to do them. I'm just not going to uh, try to burden people with that particular thing. It's great if you know them, uh, but it's better if everybody in the practice does this part of the practice the same way, or the people who are not doing this part of the practice will feel left out. And we don't really want people to feel that way when they're coming for practice. Therefore, at Columbus KTC, we encourage people to, um, to not do the five Buddha family mudra at this point so other people won't feel left out or confused. I want to apologize in advance for that because I know folks like to do extra uh, accumulation of merit by doing all of the mudras, but uh, just for the sake of simplicity and for helping beings, uh, uh, we're going to do it like that. Uh, the last part of our little play is going to be that from our heart uh, emanate rays of light because we're Chen Rezi, remember? Uh, and uh, at the end of each one of these rays of light is an offering goddess. And they are going to offer the seven uh, or eight offerings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, the eight offerings that is, are usually depicted on the shrine bowls. Argam, water for uh, drinking. Padyam, water for washing. Pupe, which are flowers. Dupe, which is incense. Aloke, which is lamps. Gende, which is perfume. Newede, which is food. Shabda, which is music. And then Ahong. Uh, are the, um, these are the last two syllables of the offering of um, the offering mantra. Uh, any questions about this part? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Justin, I saw you had a question earlier and I didn't, I didn't stop. Are you okay? He's okay, okay. Uh, any other questions about this part? I'm gonna stop the screen share for a second, see how you're holding up. How you holding up? Doing okay? Okay. Are we going to get the video? Yes, uh, Ed, the video will be shared this evening. Uh, um, I'll be um, I'll be uh, putting the video up on YouTube tonight, and then uh, th there will be uh, just as you received uh, the the preview uh, the preview uh, emails um, from Eventbrite uh, giving you the details. Like in two days, uh, what was it Thursday? I think they sent out one saying in two days your program. Then there was another one sent 10 minutes before the start of this program. Just as you receive those emails, you'll receive an email tonight, which, um, which has the, um, the uh, YouTube video link in it. If you do not receive this, please write to me at the address um, that is given. It's, there's a little place on Eventbrite that says contact the organizer, but I'll give the email address here uh, in, in chat and that you can write to me if you don't receive the video link tonight, kmwesley at meme.com. And if so, that way, if you don't receive it, you can send me a note and I'll make sure you get it. Thanks for asking about that. Thank you. Yeah, no, appreciate that. Other questions that folks might have. It's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> I don't have a record to go back to. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, no other questions? Okay, all right. So we will return to the, um, the visualization instruction. One question. 
yes, sir. about the five mudras that you say Kampala didn't teach you, uh, and therefore you, in your practices at the Columbus KTC, do not use them. Yeah. Um, we had received something like that from Lama Drodo. Is yes, it okay exactly. To practice it? Absolutely fine. Absolutely yeah. fine. Thank you. Yeah, any anything you have that and anything your group has the transmission for, go for it. Thanks. No, no worries. Okay. All right. Well then, um, here we go. So now that we have enacted our little play, where we are in the play right now is that we have taken refuge in gendered bodhicitta and, ha and have begun our accumulation of merit by imagining that we're Chen Rezi and that we are in Dewa Chen in the presence of the Buddha Amitabha. Uh, uh, by the way, it's interesting to note that um, in a minute, we're going to be doing a visualization for the mantra. And in our hearts as Chen Rezi is also the entire pure realm of Dewa Chen. Uh, in, uh, in, the, in the center of our body, drawing a line from the top of our head, crowns of our heads down through uh, the torso, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a, a, a small version of the entire realm of Dewa Chen inside our heart. Because after all, we're not made of flesh and blood right this minute. We're, we're made of light and we are Chen Rezi. So not only do all these Buddhas and Bodhisattvas come to life and uh, bless the Dewa Chen that we're inside of, There's all, they also bless the Dewa Chen that's within our hearts. So we now have uh, all of these enlightened beings, both outside of us and inside of us. Okay. The next part of our accumulation of merit, because now we've offered the seven or eight offering bowls and uh, so forth and so on, uh, next, we're going to offer prayers of praise because the goddesses are very busy. And so after having made these offerings, they're going to sing the praises to the Buddha Amitabha. Hong, Dei Chen Shingdu Chuki Korlo Kor, Sem Chen Nam La, Tatu Tujie, Tukje Zik, Dam Cha Zhaje Droe Chap Zepa, Nan Ta Yam Zhak Zela Cha Zalo. So, uh, Hung, in the pure land of great bliss, you turn the wheel of Dharma and always look upon sentient beings with compassion, fulfilling your commitment to protect all beings. We offer uh, prostrations to you, Amitabha, whose hands rest in the mudra of equanimity. And then the, the praise continues with the beginning of uh, the Amitabha uh, prayer that we all know and love, Emaho, which means it's wondrous, wondrous. The wondrous Buddha, Emaho Mozar Sanje Nawa Taye Dan, Tuje Chempo, Tujen Todani, Sanje Jan Sem Pame Tamchela, Se Chik, Gupe Semki Soa de, Dala Chogi Nudrup Saldu, so Nangwa Taye Drupar Jinji Lo. So um, our hands are in prayer mudra from really from the beginning of this part where we say Hong in the pure land of great bliss you turn the wheel of Dharma because we're, we're standing in for the offering goddesses who are offering these praises. So we place our hands together like they are doing. And then we say, Amaho, the wondrous Buddha of infinite light, um, the great compassion, uh, uh, great compassionate one, uh, Amitabha. I mean, I'm sorry, great compassionate one, Chenrezig the great powerful one Vajrapani and all the countless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. With a mind of one point of devotion, I supplicate. Please bestow the supreme city. Please bless me to accomplish Amitabha. Okay. So, okay. So that's, uh, so that's where we are uh, right now. We're, um, we're making these prayers of praise. Any questions about this? Okay. I'm checking chat to make sure there's nothing in there. Okay, good, we're okay. All right. So then uh, after this, bless me to accomplish Amitabha, means may I have the blessing of Amitabha and may I be reborn in Dewa Chen and so on. 
So then one's hands are no longer in prayer for the next part, because anywhere you see visualizations described, like here's one, Plaso kule user nupcho tru, dechen jingne upa me pa yi, kudang train cha sen pa me pa, charjin bapne da la timpara juru. Uh, wherever you see uh, visualizations described from the bodies of the assembled deities, light rays radiate to the west. From the pure land of Dewa Chen, Amitabha's form, strings of his mantra, and hand symbols in immeasurable numbers fall like rain and are absorbed into me. Um, that is describing what we're going to be visualizing while we recite the mantra Om Ami Dewa Shri. And so your hands don't need to be in prayer for that, just as they don't need to be in prayer at the very beginning of the sadhana, when you say, I appear as the white bodhisattva and Amitabha is in front of me, those sections will not also take the prayer mudra. So we're, uh, does anybody have questions about that part? Okay, so now we're gonna describe this visualization in detail. Uh, according to uh, Kempo Partha Rupache's uh, teaching, uh, he teaches um, at this point that what happens is that uh, um, lights issue outward from the three uh, deities in front of you, the Buddha Amitabha, Chenrezi on his right, and um, um, Vajrapani on his left. And that these lights go out from their, uh, from their three places and from their hearts and that uh, it evokes the blessings of the real uh, Amitabha. So how you would visualize this is that you would see lights coming out from them and then going to the, uh, going to the realm of Dewa Chen. These lights are multicolored. They're mainly red, but they, they emanate in all five colors from the three main deities in front of you. They go to the pure realm of Amitabha and invoke his body, speech, and mind, and the body, speech, and mind of all of the Buddhas who are visualized as being with him. The blessings uh, at, the, at the end of these light rays uh, are, um, uh, they, I'm sorry, at, when these light rays touch the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, it invokes their compassion. We're, it's like we are praying to them with light. And, uh, and so when the lights touch them, their blessings are invoked and then they send back their blessings like rain. Uh, this particular type of visualization is called the descent, D-E-S-C-E-N-T, descent of blessings. We invoke them and then their blessings descend upon us. Their body blessings return in the form of Amitabha's form large, small, tiny uh, forms of Amitabha made of light. Their speech blessings return in the forms of strings of the mantra, Om Ami Dewa Shri. Their mind blessings return in the form of the hand implements, uh, the uh, begging bowl, uh, the mala that Chenrezig is holding, the lotus and the vajra and bell and so on. So all of these, so strings of the mantras come to us and are absorbed into us. These blessings fall on us and all beings in the six realms of existence, all of them. It falls on all beings everywhere in all of the realms. So Amitabha is blessing not just us, but he's blessing all the beings of the six realms. And he's... Um, and these blessings purify negative karma, which we need. We need to have our negative karma purified. They heal all of our illnesses. We all need this. They remove our mental afflictions. And they give us uh, all of our qualities. And they remove all of our poisons, uh, the three poisons, attachment, aversion, and ignorance. So. The light essentially, and Kemper Mache said this on a different occasion about this type of practice. He said, we see the lights removing from us everything that is wrong. And then we see the lights giving us everything we need, wisdom, compassion, qualities, and so on. 
So these, um, these lights actually then perform the, um, the work of Dharma, because look at all of our Dharma practice. What are we trying to do with all of our Dharma practice? We're trying to purify our negative karma, purify our mental poisons, um, purify uh, our confusion, and uh, remove all our mental afflictions. And we wish for our Dharma practice to give us qualities, uh, wisdom and compassion. And so, um, and so it, these lights essentially do the work of Dharma and they, uh, and they uh, give us these blessings. And Rinpoche in his commentary on Amitabha said that when these lights touch us, as well as all of the beings in hell and the, everything from the lowest hell to the highest God realm, it touches all of those beings too. It transforms them, he said, into pure physical form. In other words, we all become fortunate ones who can be reborn in Dewa Chen. You can see the hungry ghosts turn into, <laughs> and hell beings turn into uh, human-like beings made of light, essentially. And by seeing these beings transformed, we make the aspiration to liberate not just ourselves from samsara, but all beings. And, uh, and while we are reciting Om Ami Dewa Fri, we can do this cycle of visualization as many times as we wish. In other words, we see the lights go out from the Buddhas in front of us, the Buddha and Bodhisattvas in front of us. We see the light go to Dewa Chen. We see the, the light invoke the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas compassion. We see the compassion blessings, compassionate blessings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas come back in forms of their being, the mantras, the, the hand implements and so forth, and that all of these rain down upon us and upon all sentient beings purifying them. In order not to get bored, if you're doing the mantra for a long period of time, in order not to get bored, what you can do is that you can visualize this cycle, lights going out, invocation, blessings coming back. You can do it more than once, starting from the, the beginning of sending the lights out, invoking the Buddhas, their blessings coming back. You can do it more than once. You also can think about specific things that are bothering you. Let's say you have a bad habit you're trying to correct. You can imagine the light taking away your bad habit and the bad habits of all beings. If you feel like you lack wisdom or you feel like you lack compassion, you can see the lights giving you those things and giving that to all sentient beings and so on. So this is what you would do during the mantra, Om Ami Dewa Hri. Additionally, if, you, uh, if you're doing the mantra for a very long time and you get a little bit bored, you can review your, uh, the visualization of yourself as Chen Rezi from top to bottom and from the bottom back up to the top. And then uh, uh, go into uh, the heart of yourself as Chen Rezi and imagine the little uh, Amitabha Buddha facing outward and on his right, uh, would be uh, Chenrezig, and on his left would be Vajrapani. You can actually spend a little time looking at that, and maybe even going even into the heart of uh, the Amitabha inside you, into his heart where there's a tiny syllable hri, which you can see here. This is the seed syllable hri, made of red light. You can take a moment to visualize that. Kemper Rinpoche said, if you can't visualize Tibetan letters, don't worry. Don't worry. He said you can see small spheres of red light instead of the syllables. So this uh, visualization can be uh, as simple or as complex as you like. Your Chen Rezi, inside your heart is the, the, a small Buddha Amitabha with Chen Rezi on one side, Vajrapani on the other. And inside Amitabha's heart is the small uh, red syllable Hri, which gives off light. It's like the essential part of uh, the Buddha Amitabha. And it's sitting on a little moon disc in the heart of the Amitabha inside your heart. So you can get as complicated with this as you want or make it as simple as you can. You may not be able to see all beings of the six realms, but know that they're there. You may not be able to see all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of Dewa Chen, but know that they're there. 
And Kemper Rinpoche said, uh, we all start out not being able to visualize much of anything. But he said, if we can feel the presence of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and the presence of these uh, being, sentient beings around us, that's good enough. Anybody have questions about this part? Did this help you out there, Matthew? Because I know you were interested in, uh, in the visualization. Absolutely, I've been taking notes the whole time, so thank you. Awesome, awesome, <laughs> okay, good deal. And additionally, um, I just remembered that I do have an outline and I will send that as well this evening. And the outline uh, summarizes the visualization and I'll, I'll, uh, I will send that with the um, uh, email tonight along with the video. Thank, so you. thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's see. Um, okay. When anybody else have a question? I can't see all of you. So if you want to unmute and ask, you may. Okay. Uh, then. And just a question. Yes, please. In the teaching of the long Amitabha practice, Kempala also, I think, gives four or five different specific um, visualizations. Are they, can they be included in the short form? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Uh, we did ask him that question uh, back, back in the day when he gave that teaching. And he said, yes, you can do these same visualizations uh, from the longer practice uh, in the shorter one. Um, it, it's perfectly fine to do that, but this is just kind of like the short, the, the short version of it is like the encapsulation yeah. of everything that, okay. that descent of blessings encapsulates everything. Does that Thank help? You. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And before we've learned the long Amitabha practice with its many visualizations, before we learned that, this is what we, we begin with. And he says it, you can do it either in the complex way or the easy way, depending on your time and your inclination. But, uh, but I, at this point, I still just do these because <laughs> it's so much easier. Right. Yeah. Um, as you can see in the instructions, it says, uh, recite Om Amidewa Hri as many times as possible and then repeat Hri. Right. Uh, uh, Hri is the seed syllable of the Buddha Amitabha. It's also the shortest version of his mantra. Free, 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 free. <laughs> so it is the, the shortest version of the Amitabha mantra. And those of you who've read the, uh, the uh, text on the long Amitabha practice know that it's um, the uh, Om Amidewa Hri is called the Father Tantra Mantra. Mm -hmm. And that rhymes, cool. And Hri is the Mother Tantra Mantra. But we're not going to get into all that because that's where my uh, my knowledge begins to collapse. <laughs> so we're just going to stick with this right now since we're short on time. Thank you. Okay. All right. So while we are reciting Om Ami Dewa Hri, we do this uh, descent of blessings, sending the light out and receiving the blessings. But what do we do when we're reciting Hri? Hri, 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 Hri. This one's quite complicated. And Rinpoche explains it in his commentary. I'm just going to read you what it says, because that's the easiest way to describe it. While we're reciting Hri Hri Hri, from the Hri, okay, remember the little Dewa Chen that's in your heart with Amitabha in the middle, Chen Rezi on the right and Vajrapani on the left. Okay, remember that? Inside the little Amitabha's heart is the little shiny red Hri, right? Okay, so... Then from that Hri on the moon disc in the heart of Amitabha in your heart, many red Hri's emanate in a continuous chain. Those of you who grew up <laughs> with neon lights as children, that sometimes they, these neon lights would show like little arrows that lit up one at a time to, to indicate the direction of something. Even now, highway signs that indicate that you have to get over one lane will have these little... Uh, sideways Vs that appear and then appear to move by lighting and, and, and so on. I always think of that when I think of these trees emanating from the heart, that they, they radiate in a chain in this way. They, they, the trees emanate like that. 
So where do those, those threes that emanate from the heart of, of, of the Amitabha in your heart, where do they come, where do they go? Once they emanate, they start, they start moving. The, and it is a, this chain comes out of our mouth as Chenrezy. And it's still in a continuous chain. And it goes into the mouth of the Amitabha in front of you as an offering. Remember, we have Amitabha in front of us as well, right? And then it goes, it drops down into the heart of the Amitabha in front of you, where there's also a Hri. The Hri's are blessed by Amitabha and then come out the navel of the uh, Amitabha in front of you. Okay, so that, that comes toward you as Chenrezy, goes into your navel as Chenrezy comes up to the uh, Amitabha in your heart and goes into the navel of the Amitabha in your heart, goes up to the free in the heart of uh, Amitabha in your heart, and it forms a continuous chain. You can see this chain as moving. You can see this chain of freeze as being continuous motion. The freeze are coming out of your mouth as Chenrezy into the mouth of the Amitabha in front of you down to his heart where it's blessed by him. It comes out his navel, comes into your navel as Chenrezy up into the navel of the Amitabha in your heart, comes out his mouth again and so on. So this chain, this continuous chain between you and as Chenrezy and Amitabha in front of you shines with brilliant red light. Uh, you could see it as like a whirling firebrand almost. Because uh, everybody knows that when it's the 4th of July and you have your sparklers, when you draw in the air with your sparklers, you see momentarily, you see the light remaining in space. And so uh, that, is, uh, that is how you experience this as this continuous chain. But it's not just a continuous chain of freeze, it's actually giving off blessings. This chain of freeze is giving off blessings that, uh, that benefit you and benefit others. And so, uh, so that is, so it's not just moving for the sake of moving, it's moving for the sake of granting blessings. So any questions about this part of the movement? Uh, of these, I, yes. Hi, can I just ask a uh, clarifying question? You bet. So uh, when the chain of rees uh, uh, come into our navel and we're receiving that blessing, then that we, we imagine that going up into our heart and, and then the cycle begins anew out of our mouth. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I, basically what happens is, is we, we've got this, like, uh, I'm going to like make an imaginary uh, chalk drawing here. Here we are as, uh, as Chenrezy and inside our heart is Chenrezy. There's a little Amitabha that's got a little Hri, right? He also has a navel and a mouth. So, okay. We're going to, that'll come into play in a minute. So then we as Chenrezy, have a mouth, right? And it comes, uh, the, the chain comes out and goes to the Amitabha that's in front of us. It enters his mouth, goes down to the free in his heart, is blessed on the way down, comes out his navel, goes into our navel as Chenrezig, which then comes up into the navel of the little Amitabha in our heart. It goes up to his heart is blessed again, comes out his mouth again, and it all just keeps rolling. Okay. And what I've had to do with this is I've actually had to like make a little drawing and, and walk my way through it each time. Even now, I still have to walk myself through each aspect of it visually with visualization, right? I, I, I walk myself through each part of it verbally in my head, and then I visualize it. So I don't know if that helps. Okay, thanks. Other questions? Yes, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other question about this part? I know that's a lot, and you can replay the, uh, the video, uh, but uh, that will help. Now, 
as you know, even uh, each one of these visualizations changes, okay? Because the Omami Dewahri, when that stops, the descent of blessings visualization stops. And then we recite free, 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 free. And then we do this uh, whirling firebrand <laughs> visualization. But then when we stop reciting free, it, it actually, it, it ends in a different way. When, when, when we stop the visualization of the descent of blessings, uh, if we're lucky, we stop, we stop with the, the last of the blessings entering into us. But with free, it actually, there's actually a way that it, it, that it, it ends. He says, when the freeze, the recitation of freeze begin to stop, all the freeze that are circulating suddenly dissolve into one another and into the Amitabha in your heart as Chenrezig. It's like they all collapse from the place they began, which was from the heart of the Amitabha in your heart. Okay, from the heart of the Amitabha in your heart. They all, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a collapse of all of those trees that dissolve into your heart as uh, the Amitabha in your heart. Does this help? Is this clear? Questions? Okay. So uh, after we stop reciting Hri, we actually uh, do not do our meditation at that time, our dissolution of the visualization. By the way, all of this is part of the accumulation of merit, by the way. We instead uh, recite a little preamble to the dissolution. Dene dungi chom dende udu juneran la tim. Tim, the word tim means like um, dissolve. Then the Buddha in front dissolves into light and is absorbed into myself. Then we meditate silently while we perform the visualization of the, the dissolution of the visualization, which again, I'm going to just read directly from uh, Kemper Ibache's teaching on this so that it's clear. So how do we do this dissolution? The dissolution works like this. It starts with the Chen Rezi, I'm sorry, with the, um, with the Amitabha in front of us. Remember the Amitabha in front of us? Chen Rezi on his right. Vajrapani has left. So the, the, each of the, the two side deities, Chenrezig and Vajrapani, dissolve into the Amitabha that's in front of us. And all of Dewa Chen, by the way, dissolves into the Buddha Amitabha also. The, the way this is normally done would be to go in this order. We have Dewa Chen, remember, around us and in front of us. All of Dewa Chen would dissolve into the three deities in front of us. And then each of the side deities in front of us dissolve into Amitabha. And then the Amitabha in front of us dissolves into light and merges with us as Chenrezig through the top of our head. And then, uh, then you as Chenrezig dissolve from the top toward the middle of your heart as Chenrezig and the bottom toward the middle of the Chenrezig that you are into the little heart visualization of the, the realm of Dewa Chen that's in your heart. Remember, you, you have the entirety of Dewa Chen inside you. And then the same dissolution happens inside your heart. Chenrezi dissolves into um, Amitabha, Vajrapani dissolves into Amitabha, and then Amitabha dissolves into the free syllable inside his heart. And then the free syllable dissolves uh, uh, from the bottom up. Let me show you how this looks with my uh, little free syllable here. You see my pointer? This letter here is the letter Hri. Okay. So the way this would uh, dissolve is these are called uh, Bisarga. And these would dissolve into the, the central letter. And then this little additional vowel called the Achung or small a dissolves into the main letter. 
So those are the first things that dissolve, the bisarga and the small a dissolve into the main letter. Then the main letter dissolves from the bottom, from the very bottom, geographically the bottom, uh, to the main uh, letter, and then gradually through this main letter. And now I don't have two pointers, so I can't do this. But there's a, there, the, the, there's a curly cue for the letter I, Cri, and it goes from both ends, from this end and from this end, simultaneously toward the, the high point of the letter I, which is here. It goes from here to here and from here to here and then dissolves into boop, emptiness. <laughs> and this letter, Hri, by the way, is red. And what I did in order to help me do this was I photocopied or traced this on a piece of paper and then looked at it, closed my eyes and visualized it. And that was the only way I could do it because it was not easy to do. And once we dissolve into emptiness, we allow our mind to rest in that emptiness for as long as that emptiness naturally lasts could be one second, two seconds, 10. But when thoughts arise again, this is an indication of the ending of our post-dissolution meditation. And we have uh, two options. Kemp Rinpoche says that we can use the, um, of course, uh, we can use um, the, um, the next phrases, rong lu nam ke jatsun tar chum den deki kernang wa, sal dong zundu juk par jur. My body like a rainbow in the sky appears in the form of the Buddha Amitabha. I know we visualized ourselves as Chen Rezi before, but, but you know, and you have to entertain the fact that this is what's happening. <laughs> Luminosity and emptiness are a unity. So you can re-arise as the Buddha Amitabha and imagine that you are the Buddha Amitabha now red and made of light and so forth. But Rinpoche said, if you really wanna to keep to the idea of this arising, he said, think about when you re-arise, just think about the empty and luminous nature of thought, the empty and luminous nature of everything, the world around us and so forth. I mean, how does samsara turn into nirvana? How does samsara turn into a pure realm is what I mean to say. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. How does samsara manifest as a pure realm through understanding the basic nature of mind as luminosity and emptiness? And so uh, Rinpoche in his commentary said, you're sort of keeping with the, the uh, spirit of the meaning of this re-arisal when you arise thinking that all things are the display of luminosity emptiness. So you've got two choices. You can see yourself as the Buddha Amitabha or you can arise in this understanding of all things being empty luminosity. Any questions about this? Pretty interesting, right? Even though I said, um, even though I said that I would end at noon, I do want to go on to the conclusion. So this will take an additional 10 minutes. I'm sorry to keep you past class, but if you have to go, that's okay. I understand it's fine. Uh, but I think I do need to go an additional five to 10 minutes to complete the um, description here. The visualization now being at an end, being dissolved and us resting in meditation. Now we move on to the fourth part of what Minji Rinpoche called Amitabha Buddha's address, which is the dedication of merit. And before we do the dedication of merit, we make the sincere aspiration to be reborn in Dewa Chen. Because uh, remember I said that there are two ways of listing the four causes of being reborn in Dewa Chen. I will quote them correctly in the document I send to you. But a brief summary is that number one, you have to believe that Dewa Chen exists you uh, and, and so forth and so on. And then you have to really, really want to go there. That's just a summary of the four. You know, you have to believe that it exists and really want to go there and then make that request. I'm missing something in that list. So I'm going to go look it up and make sure I give it to you right. 
But that's really essentially what it is. And for just one moment, I want to backtrack just for a second on something I meant to say earlier, but didn't. Remember way, way back in the beginning, we were talking about how Dewa Chen reminds some people of the Christian idea of heaven, and they can't quite get on board with it. And I explained the idea of the Buddha Amitabha through his enlightenment, being able to manifest a pure realm. And some people might say, oh, that sounds a little hinky. I, how is that possible? How can somebody manifest a pure realm? And then I explained that we all have a mandala around us right now, and it's all kind of confused and samsaric. But if we become awakened, then our environment becomes awakened. OK, and that that's what everybody experiences when they're with us. They may not see the Buddha Amitabha, but they're going to feel something. Now, again, for the people who say pure realms, ah, that's a little that's a little weird. I don't think that's real. I have I have a story, an example I used to give that I'm going to give a different way than I used to give it. It's about a Las Vegas casino. It's the, the, the Las Vegas casino is the example. Let's say your uh, your uh, Elizabeth uh, the Great casino owner, <laughs> and you're an ordinary person, but you build this incredible casino. And when people walk into the front door, they are greeted with brilliant light and wonderful smells and there are flowers everywhere and everyone is beautiful and everyone is dressed so nicely. You would walk into that casino lobby and think, wow, this is like heaven. If an, if an unenlightened ordinary samsaric being can create the illusion of a pure realm, who are we to say that the Buddha Amitabha cannot do the same? <laughs> okay, I mean, who are we to dictate to the Buddha Amitabha? Uh, we're sorry, Buddha Amitabha, but you can't do that. Uh, a human casino owner can do it, but you can't. I mean, that's kind of crazy, right? So um, I, I'm sorry, I had to bring the casino reference in there because anybody who has been to Atlantic City or to any casino anywhere in the world knows that they understand humans and that we like certain things, smells are nice, beauty is nice, and that they create this beautiful environment around you so that you'll want to spend your money there. So if, if ordinary beings can do this sort of confused pure realm, then we certainly can give Amitabha Buddha the benefit of the doubt that really there is a Dewa Chen and we do want to go there. Sorry for that little digression, but I wanted to bring it back before we made our aspiration. So here's the aspiration. This is the part of the, Ami, of the Amitabha supplication that most people know. And in fact, many people know it by heart. Um, and um, it, it forms all of the aspects. It, it contains all four of the aspects of the, uh, of the alternate list of how to be reborn in Dewa Chen. We start with a praise, Ema Ho, wondrous. Buddha of infinite light on your right, the Lord of great compassion, and on your left, the Bodhisattva of great power, all surrounded by countless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. There is wondrous and immeasurable bliss and delight in this pure land called Dewa Chen. The moment when I pass from this life, by the way, Ni, this little letter Ni, Ni means me, may I, may I, Dog Ni, I'm sorry, I said Ni, I, 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 yeah, Dani, Dashen, yeah, yeah, Dani, you know, may I. Let me see, now I have to do it again. I have to, Dewa Chen Ji Jiao, you can do Dashen, Dine. Yeah, so you can actually insert here instead of Ni, you can actually use the, the word Shen, S H E N, which means others. And I'm typing it into chat. Like if you're praying for somebody else who has died, uh, instead of saying Dakni, you say Dakshen. 
Dashandine Sepu Jerma Ta Kewa Shengi Parma Chuparu. Okay, S H E N Shen. Instead of Dakni, it's Dak Shen. Uh, this was taught to me by uh, Lama Tashi Dunda, uh, who was our first ritual master in our three year retreat. Um, and so that way, he says, if you're praying for somebody else, Shen literally means others. But then you think of the person you're praying for. You don't have to say their name, but you can think of them. And so forth. Uh, without taking another rebirth, may I be born in Dewa Chen and behold the face of Amitabha. Having made this aspiration prayer, may all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the 10 directions give their blessing that it be fulfilled without hindrance. And then Teata Pesandriya Awa Bodhanai Soha roughly translates as may this be done or may this happen just as we have wished. May this come to pass just as we have aspired. Uh, any questions about this first half of the Dewa Chen supplication? Okay. Then we'll go to the second part. This is the part that's not as well known. Everybody asks me, why did Kemper Mache never chant the word Om? No clue, no idea, never asked him. This is the problem with having been a Dharma student in the 70s. The Lamas just said stuff and you said, yes, Lama. And you didn't question much of anything. It could have been our generation. I don't know exactly, but we just said, okay, we, we do it this way. Thank you, Lama. And that's it. We didn't bother to ask, you know, kind of dumb on our part, but you know, that's what happened. So he never explained us why he doesn't, re he didn't recite this at the beginning. So I think it's because he felt it was a continuation of the prayer, not a separate prayer in itself. Who knows? Um, may all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the 10 directions and three times think of me. I rejoice in the perfection of the two accumulations, which are merit and wisdom. All the virtue I have gathered in the three times, past, present, future, I offer to the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. May the teaching of the victorious one, which means the Buddha, flourish. I dedicate this virtue to all sentient beings that they may attain enlightenment. May all this virtue gathered together ripen in my mind stream. May the two uh, obscurations be purified and the accumulations perfected. May life, health, experience, and realization increase. In this life, may the 10th level, meaning uh, the 10th level of the Bodhisattva awakening, just short of full Buddhahood, be, be reached. Instantly, when we depart this life, may we be reborn in Dewa Chen. Once born there, may the lotus open, and in that body may we achieve enlightenment. After reaching enlightenment until samsara is empty, may our manifestations guide living beings. The words uh, samya ja ja ja, which is like um, samya virtue, 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 um, is, um, is uh, basically uh, not recited, not sure why, but I believe it's, um, uh, it's, it's like a, a seal at the end of the document. May it may, you know, sort of like, may this be a, a benefit, may this be a virtue. Um, so there we have that. I didn't, I just realized now that I recited all the rest of the parts in Tibetan, but not this part. So I'm going to do that for completeness. Chodu Jawa Seche Gan, Soni Zola Jeyirong, Dagi Dusum Gesak Pe, Kuncho Sumlat Shipabu, Jawe Tempa Peljuchi, Gewa Sem Chen Kunlango, Drokun Sanje Topjuchi, Getsa Tamche Chik Dute, Dagi Jila Minjuchi, Drimni Dane Sozote, Sering Name Nyam Topel, Se Dear Sachu Nunjuchi. Namshi Sepu Jirmata Dewa Chendu Kegir Chik Kene Peme Kajete Luten de la Sanje Shok John Chutumni Jisidu Trupe Droa Dren Parcho. Okay, there we go. Uh, someone's asking in the chat do we have a translation of uh, Teata Pensandria Awa Boda Naisoa? The closest translation that I know of is where uh, it is said, uh, may this come to pass just as we have. Um, May this come uh, to pass just as we have wished for it. But I will look that up for you and send that to you as part of the notes for today. That's my understanding of what it means, but I will look it up and bring it back to you because I've got it elsewhere in my notes. He does not explain it here. So, uh, I, but I'm going to look it up in the commentary just to make sure. So thanks for asking that. Uh, any additional questions? Yeah. Yes. Is it, is it okay to practice the sadhana using English translation? 
my understanding is that it's fine to uh, to recite the um, the practice using the English translation, and I think the reason for this, uh, from my point of view, is that uh, Kemper Rinpoche, when he explained these practices, he truly urged us very strongly to recite them in Tibetan, so we could get the blessing of doing it in the language in which it was written. Because remember, this was received as a vision by an enlightened being who then wrote it down for our benefit. And so the, the, the way to get the most potent, I feel, the most potent blessing is to recite it in the language in which it was written. However, we, we see, I see from my teaching of, of people is that there are two, there's a continuum of, of these two things. At one extreme, are the people who say, if I don't know what I'm saying, I'm not going to recite it. No, if I don't know what it means, I'm not doing it. And on the other side, we have the people who are so devotional. You know, this is the, I got to have the meaning. And this side is the, I got to have devotion. Like, oh, I don't care that I don't know what it means. I just love it. You know, I mean, so I feel, this is me personally talking now, not Rinpoche, but I personally feel that everybody needs to take a couple steps toward the middle the meaning people have to work a little toward blessing and the blessing people need to work a little toward meaning so that you can have the best of both. That's my personal opinion is worth 25 cents, but I feel like this is what I've noticed in the 25 years that I've been teaching these sadhanas is that if people are sort of stuck at these two extremes, they're not getting the greatest benefit, but if they take a few steps toward the middle, they'll get more benefit. That's been my experience. But I do feel that if a person is having trouble and struggling and cannot relate to the Tibetan, I think it's fine to recite it in English. Uh, Kemper Rinpoche, when he was teaching the Mahamudra Nundro practice, at that time when he first started teaching it, he said, well, you know, you can do your first 10,000 of your 100,000 repetitions in English so that you really internalize the meaning, but then you should switch over and recite it in Tibetan for that blessing. So what I would tell anybody is that you can do it in both languages, or if you're pressed for time, or if you just don't have the resources, the, the brain power to do anything except in English, then do it that way. Rather than not do it at all, do it in English. That would be my thought. I'm sorry, it's such a nuanced answer, but I feel that it's simplistic for me to say, oh yes, you have to do it in English, or oh yes, you have to do it in Tibetan. I, I, it's a very nuanced answer because we're nuanced individuals and we learn and, and take in information differently. And so I want everybody to feel like they're understood. So thanks for that question okay. and letting me answer it at length. Other things, questions people might have. I know okay. I did hold, yes, Thank go ahead. Thank you for the workshop. I'm really happy that we did this workshop today and uh, we are uh, at the end of our time because I know folks have other places they need to be. But um, uh, so I, I'm sorry that we lost a little bit of instructional time today uh, while we were coping with the Zoom crisis. <laughs> but um, uh, but uh, I can't thank you enough uh, for uh, coming to this uh, program today. And, uh, and I do want to let you know that uh, this evening you will receive an email from, uh, it, from the Eventbrite service. So make sure you check your spam filter to make sure that, that, that it didn't go into your spam or that you place kmwesley at me.com in your address book so that you can receive it. And it will have three things. It will have the link to the YouTube video. It will have the, uh, the notes that we took on our whiteboard. And it will have the, uh, the outline from Kempo Kartha Rinpoche's teaching on Amitabha. So uh, those three things will be included. What I tend to do with, with these is put these things up on Dropbox and then give you the Dropbox link, but the, they can usually be downloaded fairly easily. If you have any trouble downloading anything, you can just write to me and I'll make sure you get it. So okay. I'm happy to have introduced you uh, you know, really happy to have introduced you to this practice. And I see, yes, thank you. Thank you. You guys are great. Uh, thanks for saying thanks. And uh, let's do a little dedication of merit. When Kemba Karthar Rinpoche would dedicate merit, he would give this really global, um, beautiful global dedication. And I'm going to do my best to recreate that now. 
um, he would say, we dedicate, we use these words of dedication of merit to dedicate the goodness of what we've accomplished today and to dedicate all of our positive karma from the past, the present and into the future. We gather it all together and dedicate it to the liberation of all sentient beings that they may be freed from suffering, come to happiness and then to Buddhahood and coming to Buddhahood, may they emanate in all directions and benefit sentient beings endlessly. We dedicate the goodness with this thought in mind. Now I'll recite the short prayer in English. Through this merit, may all attain the omniscience of Buddhahood. May it defeat our common enemy, wrongdoing. From the stormy waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death. From the ocean of samsara, may we free all beings. May we free all beings. May we free all beings. Thanks, everyone. And I hope you'll join us on Tuesday nights for Chen Rezi Amitabha practice. Uh, we're uh, 7, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So you can join us 7 p.m. Eastern time any Tuesday evening on our Zoom channel. You can get the, uh, the directions to our Zoom channel by going to our website, columbusktc.org, and uh, click on the icon that says Virtual Shrine Room. Uh, and, then, and then you can join us on Zoom. All right, everyone. Take care. Thank be you. well. Thank you. I'll Thank see you in Dewa Chen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.